Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing some boho inspired home decor. A lot of these items you'll probably have around your house and they're all very simple to do but really effective. If you follow me on my Instagram, you know I love the boho theme. So I thought I would do um, a few DIY projects that I'm doing for my home and film them for you guys. To get started on the first project, you're going to need some old pots or jars or vases. Um, I've also got some old coffee containers because um, I've drunk all the coffee from it, but I didn't want to chuck them out or waste them. And then you're going to need some bicarb soda or um, it's called baking soda in the US, I'm pretty sure. Um, I already had a packet of this in my cupboard because I feel like everyone has a packet of this in their cupboard. And some paint, so you can either use acrylic, um, craft paint like artist paints or you could use some house paint i feel like everyone has like a sample pot or two lying around their house um and if not you can buy these from bunnings or like any of your hardware store just in the sample pot if you want a certain color that you don't have but this project is literally costing me zero dollars because i already had all of these items already so it's a great way to sort of upcycle and not have to waste items you know that I don't really want a blue vase, it doesn't fit in my house, so I'm going to make it so it fits in. Or you might recognize this guy from if you've watched my alcohol ink paint, um, alcohol ink plant quarters. This guy didn't work out, so I'm going to reuse all of these items. So, zero waste in this project. I'm going to be using three colors today to decorate my jars and pots. I'm kind of going with a warmer tone palette because that's kind of really on trend in like the boho theme. So I am going to do 50-50 split because I want it to be really textured, but if you don't want it to be really textured, add less baking soda in. So I've just got my paint and my baking soda in and I'm just going to mix that up together. I recommend baking soda, aka bicarb, depending on which part of the world you're in over using um, baking powder. Baking powder is designed to rise, like that's why you use it in cakes and stuff. So it um, reacts with the paint and actually goes really fluffy, but then dries the paint out really fast. So you have to, if you are gonna work with baking powder, like you can use it, um, it just dries out your paint super fast. So you need to work with it really, really fast. Um, I just prefer Ba um, bicarb baking soda just because it gives texture to your paint but you've got more working time with it and it's easier to use personally that's what I think but because most of these items were glass I did have to do two coats on everything just because there wasn't any like textured surface for the paint to grip to and also two coats just made sure that I had everything covered these turned out amazing and I ended up going with three different colors and then on my big pot I did decide to just texture the top and then I'm going to spray paint the rest in a white. While my spray paint was drying I just got my three colors that I've been using and I mixed them with some textured paste or modeling paste and I used that because I wanted my rainbow on this pot to be really like textured and 3D and stand out and not just to be flat paint. And then all I did was get a really nice thick flat brush and just do my arches. I love this trend of rainbows that has been going on everywhere. And honestly, it is so easy to do. And I think that textured paste on this shiny pot really just makes it pop. One thing that you just need to consider with this technique is whether you're gonna just put dry flowers in it or if you want it to display fresh flowers and you're gonna be putting water into these vases. If you don't use an acrylic paint that is water resistant or waterproof, when you do add that water in, it might start to dissolve your paintwork. So that's just something that you need to look into when you are choosing your kind of paint that you're gonna be using. For the next DIY, we're gonna be making this really cool raffia wall hanging. Um, and then you're going to need some raffia. I got this from Kmart. You can get it from any art supply store or even Bunnings sells this, which is like a hardware store in Australia. So I think they were like $3 a packet. And I got four packets, so I hope that's going to be enough. So basically this one is super simple. 
I'm gonna pop up some photos of ones that I found that are in store and that are a little bit pricey. Um, so we are going to be doing it a lot cheaper. So each packet of this is $3. I already had the hoop um, from a Christmas wreath that I made. Uh, so hopefully this will be under a $10 project. And then the mirror that I have, I already had it. So um, the only thing I've had to buy for this so far is the raffia. I ended up going through all the raffia that I had and just cut it in half. This honestly isn't a hard DIY project. It's just a little bit time consuming with the cutting and then just doing all of the loops. So all I did was just loop it through and then pull it tight and just kept repeating this process. Like not a hard process at all, but it just took a while to do and I'm really happy with the finished result. Then once I hanged it up, I just went along with my scissors and cut off any that were just sticking out a little bit too long and just sort of neatened it up and styled it. Okay guys, so it's time for the last DIY. So I've gotten this cushion and this one is just from Target Australia. And I got some cord, uh, it's plaited cord and I just got this from Spotlight. It was only a few dollars per meter. And I think I've got around four, maybe five meters. I can't remember. Um, and I decided I wanted to kind of do up a cushion. If you love cushions like I do, you know all of the really nice designer ones are very expensive. I never realized how expensive cushions could be until I started to buy some. Like $80 to $100 per cushion is just ridiculous. So I've had this idea and you can really do whatever you want with this idea. You could write words with it like love or I'm what I think I'm gonna do is like some shapes with this now if you can't get a hold of this exact plaited um, braid you can always just buy some braid and then plait it together it's just you know your basic plait but I was lucky enough to find this and I also think this against like the velvet is like very boho looking it's a little bit macrame so let's get started the first thing I did was just remove the cushion from the pillowcase as this will make it easy to work on a flat surface. Then I just kind of was working out my design. I knew I wanted shapes and I, that sort of a little bit of that 70s vibe. And then when I was finally happy with my layout, I went along and started to pin, making sure I wasn't pinning to the other side of the case. So I was just placing my hand inside to make sure I wasn't pinning both sides together. And then I just went along and cut any edges that I didn't want to be connecting. I personally like the frayed edges. I think it looks a little bit rustic and a bit bohemian. But if you didn't want the frayed edges, I would recommend tucking them over and then stitching them in. I did stitch across all the edges just so they wouldn't over fray. But if you don't like them at all, just fold them over and then tuck them in and sew them into that seam. I've got to say the hand stitching did get a tiny bit tedious, it did take a while. I should invest in a sewing machine for these projects, but the reason why I did want to stitch it instead of just gluing it was because if I do get it dirty that means I can chuck it in the wash, but if I have glued it I would worry that by the time I pulled it out all of it would have fallen off. But if you are just going to be using this as a decorative pillow and don't plan on getting it dirty, then you could always just glue it to save some time. And here's the finished cushion. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it suits perfectly in my space. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. If you are new to my channel, please do subscribe as I post new videos every single week, all to do with art, craft, and DIY. And let me know in the description box below, what was your favorite project that I did? Was it the wall hanging, the cushion, or the pots? Please let me know in the description box below. And as per usual, don't forget to follow me on all of my other social medias as I post tons of quick little videos like this, showing you fun new ways to do DIY projects. I'll leave everything that I used in the description box below and thank you guys so much for watching.